In section 2.1, titled Linear and Quadratic Functions and Modeling, we are of course going to be working with both linear and quadratic functions. Uh, the main goal being able to recognize, write, uh, graph linear and quadratic functions, and then also of course to be able to use those functions to problem solve real world type problems. Both linear and quadratic functions are specific types of a more general function called a polynomial function. So let's begin by defining what a polynomial function is. Polynomial function, we can define this way. Let n be a non-negative integer, and let the coefficients a sub 0, a sub 1, a sub 2, etc., on out to a sub n be real numbers, uh, as long as the a sub n is not equal to 0. Then we write a polynomial function to look like this. Uh, f of x equals a sub n x to the n plus and then a sub n minus 1, x to the n minus 1. The n minus 1 is just simply uh, 1 power less than this one. And we just continue decreasing powers of x until we get all the way to the constant term at the very end. Okay, uh, We have seen functions like this, no doubt. Uh, the form there might look somewhat confusing. Um, yeah, but I'll just give you an easy example here. Then we have f of x equals 4x to the third plus 5x squared plus x minus 7. That's a polynomial function. All the, the coefficients, the 4, the 5, the 1, the constant negative 7, those are just the little a subscripts that we see here. And of course the powers of x along the way decreasing by 1 as we go. Simple enough. Now for some polynomial functions they show up often enough uh, that we we give them names uh, and, and these typically belong to the polynomial functions that have lesser degrees. Um, so here's just a chart to describe zero, first, and second degree polynomials. Well zero degree polynomial is simply called a constant function Constant functions are of the form f of x equals a, where a is just a constant, so no variable x. First degree polynomials, we've worked with these already. They are linear functions. They are of the form ax plus b, or mx plus b if you like the, the letter m for slope. Second degree are quadratic functions. We've worked with those already a little bit in the prerequisite chapter, or in the last chapter I guess. Um, they are f of x equals ax squared plus bx plus c. So going from no x to x to the first to x squared, etc. In this first example, I want to do a review of a linear function problem. Uh, one where we've seen this type before, but this is presented a little bit differently than we have seen. Uh, directions say write the equation for the linear function such that f of 3 equals 3 and f of 5 equals 8. Um, so function notation is being used here, and we have to be able to uh, interpret interpret um, function notation to ordered pair points. Uh, saying that f of 3 equals 3 is like saying that when x is 3, y is 3. And saying that f of 5 equals 8 is like saying when x is 5, the y value is 8. Well, having two points, we can find the slope. Slope, we do the y minus the y divided by the x minus the x. So the slope is 
five halves. And then once we have slope, we can use one of the points and plug it into point slope. I'll rewrite point slope. It's been a while since we've seen it. Let's pick this point, but it doesn't really matter. So I'm going to have y minus the 8 equals 5 halves x minus 5. So we get y minus 8 equals, distributing the 5 halves, we get 5 halves x. That's that. Distribute here, so minus 25 halves. We need to add 8 to both sides. And that should finish the problem. So we have y equals 5 halves x. Uh, this is going to be minus 8 is the same as 16 halves. So we have negative 25 plus 16. We would have minus 9 halves. This exploration problem is a, an example of linear modeling. It says Camelot Apartments bought a $50,000 building and for tax purposes are depreciating it $2,000 per year over a 25 year period using straight line depreciation. What is the rate of change of the building, of the value of the building? Well, anytime you see rate of change, you're talking about slope. So this wants to know what's the slope of the value of the built building. Well, rate of change is how much it is, in this case, losing value per year. It is losing negative $2,000 per year. Or it's losing $2,000. Um, its rate of change then is negative $2,000. Question two. Write an equation for the value v of t of the building as a linear function of the time t since the building was placed in service. Okay, so let's think a linear equation, y equals mx plus b. We're going to use the, the variables here and the problem, however, so instead of y, we're going to say v of t stands for the value at specific time uh, increments. Uh, the m is the slope, so negative 2,000. Instead of x, I'm going to use t plus b. That's the y-intercept. Or think of the y-intercept as the starting value of the building. The building started at $50,000. So there's our linear function that models this problem. Question 3 says evaluate v of 0. So v of 0 would be negative 2,000 times 0 plus 50,000. Well that of course goes away so it's just 50,000 which makes sense. The value of the building after 0 time has passed is the value of the building, what it started at. And then we want v of 16. So that would be negative 2,000 times 16 plus 50,000. Let's see, this over here would be negative 32,000 plus 50,000 would be $18,000. So this interprets as after 16 years, the building is worth $18,000. And finally, we're asked to solve, question four, solve v of t equal to 39,000. So it's telling us that the value is 39,000. So I'm setting that equal to my equation. Um, well, so let's see, I could subtract the 50,000 across, so that would give me negative 11,000 equals negative 2,000 t. Divide by negative 2,000, we get t equals 5.5. And those units are 
years. So after five and a half years, the value of the building would be $39,000. Continuing with our discussion on linear functions and linear modeling, let's talk about linear regression. So what do we mean by linear regression? So linear regression is basically the, the process of finding an equation of a best fit line that would go through a set of points on a scatter plot. You know, we're all familiar with doing scatter plots. Say I give you a graph and we plot some points. Um, we can see that those points cluster uh, kind of around a line and that line called a best fit line and we would be attempting to find then the equation of this line using it to then predict values uh, for this data set. Uh, it's a simple definition for linear regression. It's not a statistics course so we're not going to get into it in too much depth. When we talk about linear regression or any sort of regression, we generally talk about correlation too. Correlation is uh, can be described as maybe the measure of maybe how well the fit is of the line. Uh, and there are different types, and here we see, talking in a linear sense, uh, we could have, if you can read the words here, what we call maybe uh, a strong positive correlation versus a weak positive correlation. Um, positive meaning um, the slope of the line would be positive. Uh, strong versus weak, however, meaning that in a strong correlation, the points are clustered very close to this line. In a weak correlation, the points stray kind of far off that line. Of course, we can go negative as well. You see kind of a strong and a weak negative correlation, negative slopes, points are then either close or far away from the line. And it's possible sometimes to have something like this where there's just uh, no correlation at all. Like, you know, there's no right uh, way to draw a line through there at all. Um, and that happens a lot too, that you maybe have two sets of data that aren't related at all. You know, say I wanted to um, try and relate a student's GPA to their height. Um, one does not really impact the other. There'd probably be no relation there at all. Yeah, so, so there are instances like that where, where that can happen too.